Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this video, we want to talk about stereographic projection and how you can make it in Grasshopper. Uh, basically, I'm going to teach you step by step how we can make it by defining, uh, first of all, a pattern, as you can see here on the ground, which is going to be the shadow we want on the ground. The next part is to define a base surface. As you can see here, I've scaled a sphere in XYZ direction to make this. Uh, surface. The next step is to project the shadow we want onto that surface as you can see by series of lines and make the final results which I'm going to explain step by step and extract the stereographic projection uh, onto the base surface as you can see here and uh, model it in Rhino. So be sure to watch the video till the end because we're going to make these three steps the shadow, the base surface and the projection uh, step by step in Grasshopper. But before we do that in Grasshopper, the best technique you can do is to model it in Rhino and then uh, remodel it in Grasshopper. So what I want to do here is to draw a rectangle, a simple a square maybe, and make an array of these. So I'm going to type uh, array as you can see here. Uh, the number in the x and y direction, for example, maybe a 4 to 2 and number in the z direction is going to be one. And then I'm just going to give this a little bit of a gap. Uh, we're going to control all of this in Grasshopper once we do that parametrically. So I'm just going to show you the steps here in Rhino. Uh, then we can also draw a rectangle around all of these arrays and maybe make an offset from that. Uh, I'm going to give that an offset of two and delete the main rectangle okay for example that is going to be what we need here and just a little bit of a scale to make it better i'm going to select all of them and go to the solids and use this extrude closed planar curve tool uh, let's just do that and bring them up a little bit 
just so we can understand and visualize it better, okay? After we have this in Rhino, what we want to do is to uh, make the base surface because the most important thing about the stereographic projection is what is the base surface which is projecting this shadow. Uh, so I'm going to go to the front view and simply draw a curve. Maybe this curve is going to be fine. Go to the perspective, uh, move it a little bit in the Y direction and extrude it like this and explode it so you can see the ISO curves. Uh, rebuild it so you can also see that this is a nerve surface. Uh, we want to make uh, the base stereographic projection on this surface. The next step is to define the source of light. So where is the light located? Is it located here? Is it located here? It's going to affect the overall geometry on the base surface. So let's just define a point here and I'm going to bring that up. Maybe this is the location of the source of the light, okay? This is really important. Okay, to get the pattern on the base surface, what we have to do ex is to extrude the curves to a point. Uh, because we go to the surface tools and select this one, which is extrude to point, uh, as you can see here, it, it asks us to select the curves we want to extrude. Uh, so I'm just going to delete the solid here. Uh, go to the command select all the curves, hit enter and say extrude it to this point, okay? And now you can see it's actually giving us uh, the intersection of the shadow with the surface, which is really what we need. Now we can find the intersection between this uh, surface. Let's just select everything from the extrusion and the base surface and just select intersect. This is really easy because it's going to find the intersection between these two set of groups. And now what we have here is the base uh, surface of this geographic projection here. As you can see it, uh, I can, let's go to the rendered mode. You can see this is going to be the pattern uh, we need here. Uh, and the last part we're going to do in Grasshopper is to split the surface with these curves. So I'm going to say uh, split, select all of these curves, hit enter, and just get rid of these parts. I'm just going to give this a little bit of extrusion so you can see it in 3D. And that's the final results we're going to get in Grasshopper. So be sure to watch the video till the end because we're going to take these steps uh, step by step in Grasshopper. And that's going to give us lots of freedom uh, because, for example, if you wanted to change this pattern first, uh, if you want to change this pattern, uh, you can't do that in Rhino each time. A uh, second is what if you want to change the base surface? And the third thing is what if you want to change the location of the light? That's going to give you a parametric sense of view of this radiographic projection and the final results. So that is going to help us and we really need Grasshopper in this uh, part. So I'm going to just get rid of everything and start that from scratch in Grasshopper. Uh, but before we start this tutorial, if you're new to our channel, uh, remember to subscribe because you get notified as we publish new video tutorials. And also, if you don't know anything about Grasshopper, I'm going to put up a playlist which is going to get you started about the basics up here. Just check it out and uh, you can learn more about Grasshopper. Uh, okay, first of all, what I want to do here is to draw a pattern, a parametric pattern in Grasshopper because we can do that in Rhino uh, and it's a static geometry, but because we want a dynamic geometry, I'm going to go to the vector and select a simple pattern as possible. For example, a square is going to be fine. And uh, as you can see here, uh, there are several inputs we're going to give. Uh, uh, I'm just going to use this uh, as an example that you can play with the shadow as the first step. Uh, for example, the input of the plane has to be a plane, but I'm going to give this a point. And when you give a point to a plane, it's going to assume it's an XY plane. So that's perfectly fine because that's exactly what we need. Uh, I'm going to give a point to the plane and set it here. So that's going to help me to move my pattern uh, in the space. Uh, the second part is to give the size. The size is not really important, but if you want to, you can just give this a number slider, maybe. 
and give it to the size and I can make it smaller or bigger and then there's going to be the number in the X and the Y maybe from 1 to 10 so this is going to be X because we want to control the pattern in the X direction and also the Y direction this is going to help us to produce different patterns uh, maybe we just wanted to make a pattern or a shadow on the ground which is uh, more in the X direction than the Y so that that can control the overall pattern okay uh, the next part is to make an offset inside these so I'm going to go to the curve and use this offset curve tool to offset these curves inside I'm going to give that to the curve because it's going outside I'm going to select distance expression and hit on minus X and then give it a number slider maybe from 0 0.1 to 1.00 and maybe we can control that easily here okay uh, what if we want to have the same uh, thickness we have here on the border that's also a, an issue so I'm going to draw a rectangle uh, around this pattern like that and then offset this half of the distance we have here uh, how can we do that it's really easy so I'm going to go to the surface and from the primitive I'm going to use the bounding box the bounding box is going to help you uh, to find the bounding box of these patterns because uh, it's in groups as you can see here and if you don't know about this uh, I mean the groups the flatten the graft and those things I'm going to put up a video you can check out later but for now I'm just going to flatten the input so all of these patterns uh, 18 rectangles are going to go in one group the second most important thing about bounding box is that by default it's per object and as you can see the output is going to be 18 flat box so we have to change this per object to union I'm going to right click and select union box let's just do that and as you can see the output is going to be one flat box exactly what we need here uh, to get the borders I'm going to go to surface uh, analyzers and maybe you can use the b-rep edges you can use the b-rep wireframe really doesn't matter and we need the, uh, the naked edges as you can see here we have four edges here so I'm going to go to the curve and join them together by join curves and this way we will extract the curves. There, there are other ways. Maybe you can uh, use this point and this point to draw, to draw the rectangle, uh, or you can just simply find the coordinates, uh, the length of this, the size of the uh, squares, multiply that by the x and just find the coordinates. That's not really important. We can use different ways to get the border. The most important thing is the border. Uh, now again, I'm going to use the offset and at the last we just have to give the same distance we offset all of those uh, squares to the border and that's going to give us the final results I'm going to turn everything off and as you can see here we have the same thickness everywhere which is exactly what we need uh, now we just have to convert all of these curves into a base surface uh, I usually go to the surface tool and use this boundary surface use the shift key to give all of them into the input again uh, because it's going to find the boundary surface for each of these groups right it's like saying uh, like 19 times I'm running boundary surface which I don't want I want all of them to run once so I'm just going to flatten this just flatten and we have all of them in one group uh, that is the parametric shadow we needed uh, on the ground so now we can control the size the number in the x direction the number in the y direction as you can see here and also a thickness we can control okay so that is the first step we just uh, going to make that in the group and I'm going to type here the first step which is uh, parametric shadow 
right? That's the first step. The next step is to define a base surface. So uh, to do that, I'm going to draw a sphere. In the surface, I'm going to go to the sphere and make that parametric. I'm going to give it a base. Again, we can just put a point. This is going to be uh, the location of the uh, point. This point is going to control uh, the base surface we want a, a stereographic projection on. So I can move it in the space in any direction I want. And uh, the second is the radius, obviously. I'm going to control that also to make it bigger and smaller. And because I want more freedom on the form, I'm going to also scale it. Uh, let's go to the transform menu and use this um, scale non-uniform. Scale non-uniform is great because you can scale it in different direction in X, Y, and Z. Uh, the sphere is going to be to go to the geometry. Uh, the plane is obviously the same as the point. So I don't want to give another plane to this and the scale x, y, and z. Maybe we can make it smaller. So I'm going to start with 0 0.2 to 1.5 because we want to make it bigger, for example, and name this x. Control C, Control V three times. I'm going to just arrange them. Name this y and name this z and give that to the scale y and z, okay? So we can scale them in different direction. And control the overall shape. Okay, that is also the location. Let's just make this a group. This is going to be the parametric base surface base surface that is going to make us uh, the stereographic projection now that we have the parametric base surface uh, we have to project this to a point uh, where is the location of the source of the light okay the light can be anywhere it can be here it can be here uh, whatever location we need. So I'm going to again go to the Parms menu and pick up a point and set this to maybe here. Okay. And what we have to do is to extrude the shadow as I've explained before in Rhino to that point. That's really easy in uh, Grasshopper. Uh, what you can do here in Rhino, as you remember, we have to extrude only curves but in grasshopper this is really great because if you go to the surface and in the free form and use this extrude to point uh, you can see that it can be curve or surface so that's an advantage you have in grasshopper uh, i can use this surface and extrude it to the point and as you can see i can move the location in different parts okay and now we have to just intersect that with the base surface. Uh, I'm going to name this three light source or maybe light location. Okay, now that we have this, we have to find the intersection. So I'm going to go to the intersect menu. And obviously in the physical, we have this B rep B rep tool intersect a B rep which is this one with this one turn this off and now you can see something happening it's getting the final results but there is a trick here which is really important and we have to uh, fix that the most important thing is that what if the light source is right here Okay, for example, here we have the extrusion to point, but the problem here is that uh, the shadow is not going to be right at this location. Maybe somehow this part is okay because we have this intersection. Maybe this part is going to be completely 
lit up because the light is going to just contact the surface, right? We have a problem. We have to uh, check out that is this light source intersecting with all of this base surface. This is really important. So if it's inside this, for example, uh, this is going to be okay because it's intersecting with all of the parts. But if it's like outside this and two of these edges and just two out of these edges is outside, for example, this edge and this edge, this can be a good indicator that we don't have intersection, but these two edges we have here, as you can see here, uh, we have some intersection with the base surface. I'm going to use this logic to say that the output is right or wrong, okay? Uh, what we can do here is to make a pyramid with the output of the border. Uh, we have the border right here, and I'm going to extrude the point this time I'm going to give the complete border and as you can see here this is going to give me the thing I need okay uh, now that I have this I have to uh, find uh, let's just make this wireless so it's more beautiful it doesn't intersect with the outputs and now we have to check it out uh, I'm going to go to the intersection first let's just get the edges so I'm going to go to the surface and deconstruct the BREF or just extract the edges doesn't matter really matter let's just go with the BREF edges and find the naked edges the naked edge is going to be this one the interior is going to be four which is exactly what we need I'm going to just turn everything off turn this off and now you can see these four ray of lights which is coming out of the light source okay and now what I have to do is to be sure that each of them has an intersection with the base surface uh, now that we have the base surface go to intersection and in the physical uh, B rep curve will be great intersect the b-rep with the curves that's it that's exactly what we need uh, let me simplify this again if you don't know what simplify means just check out that tutorial but for now as you can see here we had four uh, edges right we had this one this one this one and this one two of them has two intersections which is really great but two of them doesn't have an intersection so how can i get this output and say if it's right or wrong a technique i'm going to use is to uh, get the list length that means that i'm going to find the length of these groups so it's going to be something like this two two zero zero and now I'm going to just multiply them together. So if I just multiply that, it's going to give me a number. Because there, uh, there is some zeros, it's going to always give me a zero, right? But if it's like two or one, it's always going to be something bigger than zero. That zero and one is going to be like false and whatever number it is, like it's like 200, for example, it's going to even be true. Because if you give that to a Boolean input, it's going to assume it's a true uh, output. So I'm going to go here in the sets and get the list length and count the points. Let's connect a panel to this. Again, you can see it's like 222, uh, 2200. Zero, zero. Just flatten this so you can see the outputs. We have to flatten it because if we don't do that and multiply that, it's not going to happen. Uh, let me explain this is going to help you to understand more about data management but if you want to know more you can watch the free tutorial or, or if you want to really really understand this we have a complete section on our course powercourse.com data management section okay now i can go to the math and in the uh, operators you can find this mass multiplication the mass multiplication is going to give you a multiplication of all of these outputs but 
let's just take a look. If we don't flatten it, the output is going to be the same. Why? Because Grasshopper runs in groups. For example, you are saying that I want a mass multiplication in this group, which is going to give you just one output. Again, a mass multiplication in this group. So it's going to, you, you are saying to the computer, I want four times of mass multiplication for each of these groups, right? Which is wrong. We have to say we want to flatten this and say that we want the mass multiplication of these numbers, right? And as you can see here, this is going to give us the correct answer. So how can this zero or another number help us? For example, let's just connect this panel to here and change the light location. As you can see here, when it goes inside, we have a one, it goes outside it's going to be zero this is really important because if it's slightly slightly just goes on the surface and doesn't intersect here right it's going to give us a zero this is really important now that we have the zero and the one the best technique you can use i usually use this technique with the sequence from the uh, list menu and a call pattern always use this true false technique with a call pattern to delete your output or not. So I usually use a call pattern and I say, okay, we had these intersection between two. And now just make a filter before that with a call pattern and give the zero or the one to the call pattern. So if it's like a zero or a false, it's going to give you nothing. And when it goes inside and it's a one, it's going to give you the output. So it's like a filter because you've used this logic to the call pattern output. So this is going to help you to get the results. And as you can see here, uh, it's going to show you nothing if it doesn't have an intersection. Uh, another technique I like to use is to uh, maybe just draw uh, an error maybe and show that and say that this is not going to give you anything. For example, if I wanted to do that, just turn everything off. Let's start with a box, control C, control V, and put that to 90 degrees, uh, union that, make it a little bit smaller, bring it up, and give that to a B rep. I'm going to internalize this. So I have this in Grasshopper. And remember that when it goes outside the boundary and it doesn't have anything, we wanted to show this. So why not just use another call pattern here? This time I'm going to invert the Boolean. So it's going to uh, give that output as the correct answer. Turn this off and maybe use a custom preview here to show it. So remember, whenever there is a problem, it's going to show you this multiplication. Maybe we just have to rotate that a little bit like this. So it's going to show you an error. Uh, whenever it intersects and when it doesn't, it's going to give you an error. So you understand that there is a problem with the intersection. So I usually do use that technique to get the final results. Uh, okay, remember that the base surface is really important. It's going to affect the final results. So if I scale it in the Z direction, it's going to change the results. Scale it in the Y direction. The pattern is also the shadow, parametric shadow is important. For example, if I just put that to one, we can see we can have that. That's obvious because those ray of lights we had here, it's intersecting with the ground. So that is correct. There, there will be a shadow exactly at this place. So that is going to help us to get the final results. The last step, which is really important is how we can convert these curves uh, we have here into a surface. That's also important. Uh, as you can see here, we have like 19 curves. 
we have to do some of the st uh, an extra step to get the final results. First of all, let's go to the intersection and in the physical, I'm going to use a surface split. And I'm going to say split this surface with these curves and turn everything off. Just turn this error on. Okay. Now that we have these fragments, as you can see here, there is a fragment here that we have to get rid of. Then we have these parts we have to delete. So how we can do that is by analyzing the output of the surface split. So the most important tool in Grasshopper is to go to the sets and list item is going to pick things up. Uh, if I give this to the uh, fragments, it's going to be like a window here, this part. But if I reverse the list, fortunately, uh, sometimes the surface split is not going to give you good results. But for now, we have some luck because as you can see here, when I reverse the list, the biggest part is going to be at the upper part here. Uh, so what I want to do here is to go to the sequence in the list item and delete this part, which is going to be like call index. Uh, I'm going to give that to the fragments, reverse the list and give an index of zero to here. That way we're going to get rid of the upper part which we didn't need. And as you can see, let's just test the algorithm. Is everything okay? We can see that it's working. And if I scale it, I can get the final results. And also remember that you can change the location of the sphere. This is also going to give you different results. Okay, the last part is to get rid of the windows actually and get the frame out. Uh, again, if I check it out with the list item zero, you can see it's like uh, uh, the first input. If I reverse it, I don't get any chance of picking up the border. The chance we had here was okay, but now we don't have the option to just pick up the borders. So how can we uh, fix this and get the final result? Uh, we can do that with a trick. For this pattern, we know that each of these surfaces, for example, the parts inside the frame has four edges. So why not do that? We can go to the surface and use again this BREP edges. And in the naked, as you can see here, we have, let's simplify this. We have some of them has four and we have other from the Parms menu. Let's just use the Parm viewer. You can see we have four, four, four. I don't know, there's a five here, which is not really what we need, but the 82 is exactly what we need here, okay? Uh, so let's just uh, make a test again, list the length, count them, flatten this. So again, I can see the number of edges and why not just sort them? Uh, I can just search for sort list or you can find it in the sets here and say sort this out. As we are sorting these lengths from like four to the biggest, I have to use this key to sort the surfaces. So I'm going to give this uh, fragments to the value A. And now you can see that the first one is going to be the smallest with four edges, right? Because we sorted this from smallest to biggest. And again, if I reverse that, it's going to give me the biggest at the end. So I'm going to just turn this off and here we go. Based on your pattern, the shadow pattern, it's really important to use different techniques to extract the base surface. Uh, I just wanted to show you one of the ways you can do that. By list item, get rid of the first part. And again, there will be some errors. For example, what is this? I see here, right? I can see that this is, this is the problem. It's actually, deleting everything and not giving me the first one. This is just a small bug we have here. 
for this part we just can pick up the first list item and reverse it get the base surface okay so it really depends but for now I guess this is going to give you 99% of the results correct it's really based on your project the base surface you're using the pattern the problem with surface split is exactly as you can see here we have okay and remember that if you go outside of this pattern it's going to give you an error with, which means uh, it's not getting the intersection okay i hope that this tutorial was useful and you can use this for stereographic projection you can also for advanced users we have uh, defined uh, advanced example files which the power course members can download but if you want to get this example file which i'm just grouping this so you can understand what's happening uh, you can download it from our website the link is in the description and you can get the step by step as you can see here and the final results so remember that we have also the four parts which is uh, the intersection and intersection plus testing which is the final results if you want to get the final results you can use some plugins if you want to give it a thickness for example if you uh, have the pufferfish plugin you can go to the surface and use this offset surface to give it a thickness maybe just give that to here but I prefer to not connect this to the output because it's going to uh, slow down the process especially if I just turn on the profiler you can see this uh, offset surface is uh, slowing down the final results so why not just uh, change the location of the light change the pattern whatever we want to do and after we want the final results just connect that to the offset surface you can do that even in rhino so that, that's not really that important i just wanted to show you that you can get the solid if you want to and i hope this tutorial was useful remember to subscribe and like this video share with your friends I'll see you next time bye <laughs>